Solomon Romney, Program Manager for Accessibility here at Microsoft. This yeah. is a happy space. Tell me about this room. It is a happy place and people love being here. We love having people here. This is where we incubate, dream up, design, all of the adaptive products that we make here at Microsoft. Historically hardware, but now also a lot of software. It is a space dedicated to the disability community and everything in this room was chosen very specifically to support the community. Uh, the design of the space itself, every piece of it is intentional. The floors are designed to provide navigational support. That's why it's broken up with the tile borders and things for our blind guests. It's ultra level so our wheelchair user guests can move freely through the space. The double powered open doors uh, make it easy to move in and out of the space. We even have a restroom facility that we've updated with specialized equipment like a powered adult size changing table so that our guests who need to take care of things we all need to take care of on a daily basis have somewhere discreet and sanitary to do that. Uh, it's all by design. And there's so much to touch and play with and you know so why don't we get started i yeah. know it all began right with gaming yes correct so we were originally an xbox lab specifically brought about to create the adaptive controller that was project number one working with disabled veterans it was the first time any major tech company had made a piece of dedicated assistive technology for the disability community and, and that has spurred a whole series of products since and a new lab and all sorts of things so all right let's get started let's take a look at it yeah we're doing a really simple setup which mm -hmm. is just one-handed driving okay so this will be how you steer this will be your gas and this will be your brake you want to click through a little more and that'll give you a little more control. This is what I mean when I say people take I have a, a feeling like I'm going to be really bad at you this. You will. Everybody is the first okay. time because it's a totally, <laughs> it's a new paradigm. What is this game called? This is Forza Horizon 5 okay. that we're going to play. It's the open world one. It's more forgiving. So you can crash the car all you want and, oh, uh, gosh. Okay. and not run into any trouble. Okay. But yeah, but this not is using... I'm anxious. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. It's okay. There's no, it's the one and only time you're going to be free to wreck as many hyper cars and expensive automobiles as you like without any consequence. Okay, well so, show me how. First you yeah. do it. And then if okay. I want to break. You're good, I would it. ride with you. I've done this many times. <laughs> they really have, they've thought of everything. Well, and this actually, this is the first game that we've ever made that has ASL and BSL captions for all, or not captions, but actual video interpretation for all cutscenes. Wow, so let's drive. Okay. Okay, okay, I'm bad. Ooh, oh, no, oh no, <laughs> there's another car. Okay, okay, there we go. All right, all right, all right here we go. Yeah. yeah, oops, 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 nope, 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 nope. I'm just, oh no, oh no, It's oh an no. off-road game, you're good. It's, it's, I'm <laughs> off-roading. Okay, we're back on the road, we're back on the road. Okay, okay. Ooh, You're doing whoa. pretty well. No, I'm not. I just I think I just killed people. <laughs> <laughs> this this always takes some getting used ah. to. I mean, a giant jellyfish. What's going on? So this is our sensory part of the room. And yeah, the jellyfish certainly uh, draws the most attention in the entire lab. But this space is designed specifically for folks with sensory disabilities. So neurodiverse folks. Um, and by that we mean, you know, people with ADHD, autism, different developmental disabilities, and the one that we tend to forget about, which is adults with dementia. And these are all folks who can get overwhelmed by sensory input uh, throughout the day. So this is a sensory seeking space where what research, what our clinical uh, colleagues have told us, because we're not medical folks, we rely on their expert opinions, is that by having a tactile experience that you can focus on, helps de-emphasize all the rest of it. This is where we're doing the most research in how do we take all of this type of support, this type of experience, and how do I, how do I turn this into a laptop? How do I make the computing experience go from, first computers were tools, you know, a beige box, it was utilitarian, and then they became style. Are you a PC, are you a Mac? And now what we're looking at is how do we take computers to not just making me feel cool, but making me feel well. How do I make a plushie into a, into a laptop? How do I make a mouse that has this kind of uh, support, this kind of feel? But then 
The flip side is we have to do it in a way that's subtle enough that you feel comfortable using it in a public environment, in a workplace, in a school, where you can get that support without the judgment, without the stigma. I think that's interesting. You had mentioned that when we spoke before about having the right tools that not only fit your need, mm -hmm but that you feel comfortable using publicly and right. that isn't going to draw attention necessarily if you don't want that attention. Right, and some people do. Some people want to be very um, out about their disability needs and things like that. And we absolutely support that as well. But we also know that a lot of folks want subtlety. If you ask the disability community the number one thing they want, more often than not, the answer will be to be treated like everyone else. And that comes with product design as well. And one tool does not fit all. Correct. Really proud of this one. <laughs> I bet. So Solomon, tell us what we're looking at here because you had actually asked me, and it was hard for me at first to realize what the difference was, mm -hmm. but go ahead and explain. Yeah, so the first thing you'll notice, if you notice it, is the larger, higher contrast font. Uh, the bold key set is what we call this. Uh, and this was done specifically for aging eyes. That's the audience. Really anyone who just wants to read a keyboard more easily. And that's where that subtlety comes in. That if I don't have a keyboard next to it for you to compare to, as you yourself said, Tony, you don't notice the difference. It's just easier to read. And that's the whole point. Uh, what makes this one especially uh, powerful is this is the new Surface Pro Flex keyboard, which is wireless, and it has our adaptive or our uh, haptic touchpad with its adaptive touch mode, which means I can take the imprecise input of my hand here and get the same kind of precise outcome like if I was using a finger. It's a huge step in terms of the availability of our inclusive products. And I just could, I couldn't be more proud of it. <laughs> As you should be. And I think a point to make is that so many of these products, kind of like the audio book, right? Mm -hmm. Which was obviously originally invented for blind people to be able to enjoy books. But now audio books are so explosively popular for everybody, but you're actually not just developing for one specific community, right? Right. We, we have a number of design principles for inclusion, um, and one of them that I really love is design for one and extend to many. So we will solve for the extreme need, the most extreme disability case, and that naturally benefits everyone else. Audiobooks are a great example. The classic one is the curb cut. We also see it with captions. All of those designed for a very specific blind, deaf, or mobility-based uh, community, but beneficial to everyone. And this is, this is one of those pieces. Uh, this is probably the best example of that because it is so subtle. Thousands of people come in here. Yes. What are their reactions to these things? I mean, it must be such a thrill to sort of see them engage with all these products. Yeah. It, it, we get two sort of camps of reactions. We get people with disabilities, the community members who just feel welcome. They feel home. Like this space is designed to be adaptive to their needs, fully reactive, um, modular and all of that. And so they, for many of them, it's the first time they felt like they've been in a space that is really focused on them. For non-disabled folks, oftentimes this is the first time they've ever really thought about accessibility or had that be part of the conversation. And so it is, it is a lot. People like being here, they like coming here, they don't wanna leave. Uh, because it is a, it's a space that we have so, we've crafted with so much thoughtfulness and intention. Uh, and people recognize that and they appreciate it. But we learn from every one of those visits as well. This isn't a static space. We're constantly updating based on feedback, new product releases and things like that. We showcase non-Microsoft products here as well because we want to represent the entire assistive technology and dis disability experience. So it's an evolving space. Solomon Romney, thank you so much for this tour. This was really great. My pleasure.